caught the last video, we got the Sea King 300 high voltage. Now, um, this thing is probably the same size and a little bit heavier than the XLX2. Now, um, if you caught this morning's video, Big B, he busted out a brand new Impulse 32 identical to this one. And his is still in stock form, which he's going to learn how frustrating it is that thing spins out all the time. So the one thing I figured out that made it turn better was really long trim tab or really long turn fins and a longer rudder. That was the only thing I could get that would make it not spin out. But my goal for this impulse for about the last six months was to put the big heavy duty 10 shock motor in it. If you remember the impulse, that's what happened to the original 38 millimeter Evo 10 shock motor. We blew it up. That's the second one we blew up. Both of them blew up on 6S. Now I had run it on 8S, but it blew up on on 6S. The 8S it just it wouldn't the boat wouldn't run. You know, it would just get up out of the water. So it really wasn't worth worth running it on 8S. Because that was like a 2200 kV motor, now we have a 1750 kV motor in it. This is a 40 by 90 1750 kV. And I opted to put the Hobby Wing 300 in here. Now I know what you're saying. That, that ESC is overkill for this boat. And you're right. It is. These ESCs were purchased for the 45 inch catamaran. But what I want to do, because I've got uh, what I've got coming up on June 6th with taking all my boats out to the Veterans Memorial Day um, thing for uh, the people in the nursing home, I've got to get my boats running. And I've got all my other quality ESCs and other boats right now. So I can put this ESC in here temporarily. I can run the 10 shock motor on it and we can get really good data. Now, another thing... And I don't know if, if I'm just speaking out the side of my mouth here, but Oxydean, all of his motors used to be six pole, right? And he would run Hobby Wing branded ESCs. Now, I think there's something to be said about Hobby Wing ESCs and six pole motors. I just think they work together, like better. And. That's one of the reasons why I'm putting it in here. I have a feeling that this ESC will do better for this motor. And we're going to basically just use the, um, the Hobbywing app and we'll pull up all the data. I'm kind of like excited to get a battery in this thing and get into the app. We're going to do it in this video, and we're just going to run through the parameters of this ESC um, and just, you know, we'll, we'll do a walkthrough together in the app. So I've just got a few other little tidy things in here. I've got a button up. Went ahead and made me a new uh, flex cable. The other flex cable that I had was just a little bit too short, so I had this flex cable here from Fred uh, over on uh, Adam's Adam Everything RC. This flex cable was his for his Genesis and it literally fit perfectly in this boat. I had to trim off I think four and a half millimeters um, but other than that it was uh, it ended up being it ended up being pretty good. This is how much I had to chop off the end of it in order to make it work so we're pretty good there. But um, getting the impulse back out the reason why it hadn't been out is because it had cracked and you can see the crack right here Okay, and it's basically whatever they glued this stuff in with. There's another crack there. And, um, you know, I've been 82 miles an hour on this boat on 6S. And I think that was with the 2100 kV 10 shock motor. So anything above about 78, it starts to chine walk. And I've never been able to fully control that. And I felt like a reason why it was chine walking was due to light weight. So... It's going to be cool now to test this with a heavy, heavy setup in the back to where we can now run the 7600 packs. I used to run the 5200s and the 6500s, but now we can run the 7600s since I have 
multiple of those now, and we can push them towards the front and try to get a nice 70-30 weight distribution. Now, this one, like, it doesn't like 70-30. It likes just one number above that. That would be 69-31. So, if you were to do 31% from the rear, that's where this boat sweet spot is. It's just a, what, what I found out. Now, everybody's is going to be different. But, since I have the crack in here, I've, I've put some thin CA in it about three times, and then I put some medium CA in it. And I'm just going to let it hold. My overall goal long term it was to rip all that out and do a carbon fiber inlay about as far as I could reach my hand. Um, but because I've got that thing coming up on June 6th for all the people in the nursing home, I want to get as many of my nicer boats that look pretty up and running to where we can bring them. Doesn't have to be long term, but this is one of my prettier boats. Regardless of what the bottom looks like with the cracks and everything like that, you know, I think this is just cracked paint. I don't believe they did gel coat. I believe it's paint. Um, so all these are just stress cracks. Now you can buy another hull, and I'm kind of thinking about buying another hull, but I really love it. I just hate that the fact it cracked. And it literally cracked right along all the spots where they glued the stuff in. So I kind of wonder if I could buy just the hull without any of the stuff in it already. But that's neither here nor there. But enough of me talking about it. It was kind of cool to see um, B get the impulse because it kind of gave me the ambition to bust mine back out. I had the intention of getting it running, um, but I really wasn't even going to make a video about it. But I have a Dynamite 160 I thought about throwing in there, and I was like, nah, let's just throw the brand new Hobbywing 300 in there, and that way we can do <clears throat> like a startup review and go through the settings and go through the app together. So now that you know what we're doing, let me go ahead and finish finish hooking up my wires. I've got to do 8 millimeter bullets to 5.5s. I'm doing that right now. And then we'll jump into um, the Hobbywing app. And we're done. So I got an ESC and the motor and everything hooked up. If you remember back when I threw the shaft and I lost my doctor props, well, this is the counterclockwise prop. And I lost the clockwise prop. So this is Dr. Prop 1716. So I figured might as well throw it on here because with that 10 shock motor, it definitely should be able to spin it. Now, personally speaking, my favorite prop for this boat is a 1715 38 bar 19 rake ABC prop. If you go on the ABC props, it's all the way down at the bottom. Um, it's the 3819 or 1938 series, and uh, it's two blade, 1715. My favorite prop on this boat. Let's go ahead, open this up. I think we did, I don't know, 71 or 75 on that prop, something like that. That was with the stock motor, no less. Um, so we've got all of our wires ran. We've got them come over here to the 5.5 bullets. These are 8 mil bullets. We use number 10 castle wire. And um, I just kind of left my cooling lines long to where when I change this around in the future, I won't have to shorten them and, and you know, ruin them. All I got to do is throw some double sided tape on this button. We'll put that button over here. And then I've got a uh, series connector to where we can jump two 3S packs because this is a minimum of a 5S ESC. What I really wish, I wish they would have made it a 4S to 12S ESC. I think that would be ideal, 4S to 12S. But I'm not an electronics person, so I don't know why you can't do that, you know. Um, but I do know that these capacitors, they say 63 volts on them. And I guess, what is the microfarad? 680. So although they are big, they don't have a lot because of the voltage capacity um but all right enough talking about what i've got going on here let's jump in to the hobby wing app settings parameters there we go parameters is gonna get us connected to the esc it seems like 
There we go. All right. Max reverse force, 25 cent. Um, auto calculate lipos. We're going to do cutoff voltage. Let's go to cutoff voltage and just see. Ooh, we can go all, we can go really low. All right, we'll just, uh, we'll set it to 3.0. I don't know. Do some pretty hardcore runs. It may pull the cell down, but we'll leave it at 3.0. BEC, we'll bump that up to 7.4. Motor rotation, counterclockwise, punch level. Let's see what punch is. 1 through 7. I already noticed from hitting the throttle that it's... It seems about right, yeah, in the middle. Um, we'll leave it on 4. Freewheeling. I guess that's like no brakes. Okay, there you go. Yeah, uh, drag brake force disabled. Good timing, 15 degrees. No, no, no. 10 shock motor. They want 8 degrees, but we'll run it on 10. Auto channel function. 2. Don't really know what that is. 279. If you don't know what it is, don't mess with it. Ah! Back to parameters. Maximum ESC temperature. Oh, cool. So that's giving you the current right now. So right now, the temperature in my home is 50 or 75.2 degrees. Very cool. Minimum battery voltage, 22.2. Maximum motor RPM. It says 106,000. So that mean, it must mean we're in a two-pole motor configuration. Let's see if we can go in and change that let's go ahead and save this are you sure you want to save parameters yes okay let's go ahead exit out let's go down here to data log uh, peak record data record wow okay so it says real-time data that's pretty cool we can run this on a uh, on another phone or or something like that while we're actually using the boat <laughs> oh that's sick okay so I just hit the throttle and it went up on the screen right so let's go into settings see I see right there it says pole count a P L O E <laughs> all right we're gonna change this to six and that should give us our correct rpm we're gonna go down here and change this to miles per hour Gear ratio 1.0, wheel size, range, and I don't really know about that. Wheel size. It's not on a car, so we'll have to figure out something to formulate the speed. That's pretty cool. Gives you throttle percentage, RPM, current. Oh, that's super dope. ESC temperature. Very cool. Very cool. Data log. Bluetooth switch from ESC and from file. Let's go from ESC. There's nothing yet. All right, we're going to leave it in RPM or right there. Let's see. Honestly, that's probably pretty close. Um, but we'll see. We'll compare that data with uh, with what we get, and then we'll find that happy medium. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. Well, the, the real tale will tell when we get it out on the water, and we get to play with this a little bit more. Right now, I'm just kind of familiarizing myself with the system. All right, well, there you have it. We kind of went through a little quick walkthrough of the Hobbywing Sea King 300. That is what the app basically looks like, and, you know, I'm just kind of tiptoeing in it right now because we won't know more until we actually put this on water and actually see what the numbers are. But I think it's cool that it gives you the RPM and it gives you a way to kind of, like, show speed. 
think eventually we can come up with a calculation per boat that'll do that. But what I really like is that if you have two screens, like let's say you want to put a tablet on a tripod, you can link that to your Bluetooth and then it'll show you live data from this onto your other screen while you're driving. So if you had, say, one of those fancy remotes with a phone holder here, you can get all your data on that phone holder. It's very similar to what Traxxas did with all the add-ons back in the day, um, but this one's all built in, so no more add-ons. But I think it's really cool that they allow something like this with Bluetooth and all that connective capabilities. Um, you know, with Castle, you have to have this, and then every now and again, once in a blue moon, the damn XLX2 or the X8S goes into some weird limp mode, and you got to bring it home, and you got to hook it up to your laptop, and you got to use this little doodad to reset back to factory settings. That was just frustrating when I went through that for the first time. But other than that, I think we're good. We've got a. Uh, I don't. I'm just curious how heavy it is now. She's probably. Probably with the battery in it and all that, she's probably a good nine pounds, maybe ten. But we'll see. We'll see. You know, light boat's a fast boat, but maybe unstable. So now that it's heavier, it may actually be able to do something cool. But regardless, just kind of a test setup. Test the ESC. That motor was always supposed to go in this boat. So finally the motor is in the boat. Um, and it absolutely 100% positively has an ESC that can handle it. So... Cool. Just wanted to walk through it with you and uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about the ESC. Let me know what you think about the boat. Let me know what you think about the 10-shock motor. Bad to the bone. Let's hope it does good. Pop your guesses in the comment section and let me know how fast do you think this setup will go. Because we've had it at 82. Successfully, I think 81, and then 82, it did like a somersault crash and the 6S battery flew through the front bulkhead. Um, but we're only going to run it for right now on 6S, and let me know what you think we'll get out of 6S. I think, with especially with the Dr. Props, I think we'll probably do 71. That's probably what, what I think we're going to get out of it. Um, and then we'll check temps, and I think we may be able to prop prop up to the moon with this. I really do. I really do. But I'm going to go ahead and end it here and uh, we'll see you all out at the pond later. Peace.